What's going on guys? I've got a 2007 Dodge Charger here. I'm using this car to point out to you the location of the three fuses and one relay for the operation of the starter. I'm also gonna give you some troubleshooting steps, things for you to check when your car's not starting. So back here, we're gonna lift up this cover here. You know, of course it starts with the battery. Go ahead and check if your connections are tight and free of corrosion and test your battery to see if it's in good shape or not. There's a fuse underneath this cover, which we remove by pushing in here and lifting up. What we're checking right here is a 15 amp fuse, fuse number eight. This fuse provides power for the ignition switch. So if this fuse is bad, the ignition switch will not do what you need it to do. Check that fuse first, and then we're gonna move on under the hood where we'll find the remaining two fuses and the starter relay. So I mentioned that the ignition switch gets power back there. Well, when the ignition switch is turned to the start position, it takes that power and it sends it to the starter relay through this five amp fuse. So you can actually see the exposed metal at this fuse. You should see power. You should be able to measure power at the exposed metal when an assistant is turning the key to the start position. If you do not see power make it to this fuse when the key is turned to start, then you may have a bad ignition switch. So that's our second fuse. Our third fuse is gonna be a J-Case 20 amp fuse right here. This provides power to the starter solenoid through the starter relay. So you can actually look through and see that this fuse is good, but I'll go ahead and point out to you how to change it. You just grab it with needle nose, wiggle it from side to side, and it will come right out. Now the starter relay is this relay right here. And my favorite way to troubleshoot that relay is have someone hold the key to the start position and then I'll tap on the relay or I'll wiggle it. Sometimes relays can get stuck and tapping on them or wiggling them can free them up. So if you do that, then you may have a bad relay here. Let's go ahead and remove it. After doing the tap test, what I can also do is I can swap in a different relay. So for example, if my horn works, I can swap in my horn relay here. And if after I swap the relay, the car starts, then the relay was probably the issue and I will want to replace it. Now diving a little deeper on diagnosing this, you can see I've got these pins color coded. The 20 amp fuse I pointed out to you provides constant power to this pin here. So you should be able to measure power here. This five amp fuse gets energized by the ignition switch when you turn the key to the start position. If you never do see power at this fuse, then your ignition switch is probably bad. And when this fuse is working and the ignition switch is working, it will send power to this pin when you're trying to start the car. This relay is also receiving an input from the computer. The computer provides a ground to this pin if certain conditions are met. Uh, mainly if the car is in park or in neutral, ground comes in here. And also I believe the computer checks uh, to make sure that the engine is not already running. So if all the conditions are met by the computer, it will provide ground here. If you never see ground here when you're attempting to start the car, you may have an issue with your neutral safety switch or your computer, and you'll wanna use a scan tool to get to the bottom of what's going on. Now, when this relay is energized, it takes power from the 20 amp fuse coming through this pin, and it sends it here. This pin, as you may have guessed, goes directly to the starter. And when it receives power at this pin, the starter should engage. You can apply your own power here as a way to test the starter. Just be careful to make sure that the car is in park when you do this and that nobody's hands are anywhere inside the engine compartment. Um, applying power here should result in the engine turning over, assuming that the starter is in good condition, that your battery is in good condition, that your engine is not locked up, and also that the wiring is good. So that's not a permanent solution. You know, it's just a way to um, get the car going temporarily, need be, or also to troubleshoot what's going on with the starter circuit. So yeah, I hope this information was helpful for you guys. Please do let me know if you have any questions, or more importantly, if you have any advice for troubleshooting the starter on your Dodge Charger. Thanks for watching.